Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Own Your Own Freedom. If you don't know my content, go ahead and subscribe down below while hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new updates coming down the pike because not only are there new videos, but a whole lot more is coming. If you check out the description box, you'll find a link to my Own Your Own Freedom community on the app called Wix, probably the most convenient way for my viewers to get so much more out of this community. You'll find there once you download the app that I've posted some blogs there, more in-depth, extensive content and advice on navigating this toxic world that we live in by making freedom your lifestyle. You can click on the link to my website, which is coming along nicely. And you'll also see that I'm offering what I call coffee consultations, which are sort of like low key, casual, single or group therapy sessions, but at the fraction of the price. Let me know in the comments if that interests you. I'm still working on the payment processing aspect, but that should be coming along and running uh, very soon. More information to come. You'll also see in the description that on the app, I'm beginning a podcast channel of all the videos I release here so that you can listen on the go. So a whole lot coming. Like I said, let me know in the comments if this interests you, but yo, this is like, you can leave comments on my blog. You can purchase consultations. You can even contact me directly and take and talk to fellow survivors. This is how we get connected and stay connected. Plus, whoever signs up first will get a promo code for 50% off their first coffee consultation. But I digress. With that said, enjoy the video. I'm honestly not quite sure why I never asked my dad why he didn't love me. Obviously, it's a weird question that only maybe a naive child would ask, but I think the reason why it never passed my lips is because his absence spoke more than his words ever could. Like every time my mom left town on a work trip, leaving us four kids in the sole care of our father, he barely spoke to us the entire time she was gone. He would buy takeout food like Chinese or Mexican or pizza and bring it home and leaving open cartons and utensils on the counter for us to find hours after he had scavenged enough for himself. He would sit down on his bed in front of the television and work on his computer, essentially ignoring us when we tried to talk to him. The distinction between our worth and his time was never more clear than during those periods without mom. By the time I realized that he was never present at any of my school events or after school activities or major life turns, I had been trained well not to expect anything from him, not to ask anything, and sadly not to need anything. That way I was so tiny and insignificant that he had all the reasons in the world for why he never bothered to take care of me. The most often mentioned being that I simply never mentioned I had needs. Well, I'll be damned. That was precisely the answer he gave when I asked him one night at dinner why he didn't come to my school talent show. I was I actually won that one. He merely brushed it off and said I had never asked him to be there, effectively deflecting the blame onto me, to which my codependent mother supportively agreed. At first glance, that might appear like the answer to the problem, but to anyone who's ever lived in a narcissist household, you know that it's not that simple. Every request on a person with narcissistic traits is a transaction, such that is never balanced and never satisfying for the one giving the request. So what he was saying essentially is that every time I had basketball tryouts or a basketball game or a tournament or a championship or a practice or a volleyball tryout or a volleyball game or a volleyball tournament or an audition or a regional music competition or a talent audition or a state vocal competition or physical therapy or dance classes. Damn it, the list can literally go on. Every time I had something important in my life, in order to, for him to show up, I had to ask him to grace me with his divine presence rather than him taking it upon himself to be a normal father and make my life his business. 
Plus, the extra effort it would take for him to pay me any kind of mine at all would require that I be indebted to him for God only, God only knows how long or, or for what. All this communicated to me that I was an inconvenience, and he wasn't willing tr- to travel through inconvenience to get to love. Because that's what love is, right? You know, letting the object of your affection know just how much inconvenience you suffered in order to make sure they're loved. Yet another transaction. But that's the whole point. None of my events had anything to offer him. None of my events had anything to do with him. And not just me, but all of my siblings, even my mom and all of her accomplishments that I found out after, after I left the house, that she had, a, she had attained to a master's degree, a second master's certificate in, in real estate, and all of these things But to him, we were consumers, as he liked to call us in mixed company, merely mouths to feed and a yearly tax deduction. We were the ones taking from him. We were the ones who owed him. It didn't matter that every Sunday morning we had, we four kids cleaned the house from top to bottom while he sat on the couch and called us lazy. It didn't matter that every year we bought him Christmas and Father's Day presents, despite him being negligent and abusive for fear of disturbing whatever measure of peace we could get by stroking his ego. By a combination of choice and complete lack of capacity, my father viewed us as nothing but inconveniences to his delusional life of luxury, obvious contradictions to the image he portrays of himself as the ultimate philanthropist with four poverty-stricken children. And we were a constant reminder of everything he believed he deserved in his own childhood, but never got. Objectively, his view makes sense. Why invest in something that doesn't help your interests? It's easy to share these types of examples of my father's negligence and self-centeredness and think that I'm all alone in my experience, but that wouldn't be true. I am not alone. You are not alone. There will be a day in your life when you finally decide to let go of him and all of your disappointment in what he failed to be to you emotionally and physically where you will stop looking at other fathers as they spoil their children and attack them with tickle the tickle monster in the middle of the grocery store and think bitterly, why couldn't I have just had that? But until that time comes, take a moment right now and mourn for the loss of your father. Mourn for every interaction where he failed to be what he was created to be. Mourn him. And then thank God you survived him.